So like I said, we've been looking at the third structure, code structure, uh, repetition or iteration sometimes called. The three of them are sequential, then comes selection or decision, and now we've covered iteration and repetition. We've got the three types. We have while loops, we have do loops, we have for loops. Um, there is, there's a subcategory of the for loop, it's called a for each, and we'll come upon that as we move through this. Uh, once we get into arrays, um, the for each becomes a little more prevalent and useful. Uh, tonight, what I wanna really talk about a little bit before we do a program is methods, because that's the next chapter. And methods are, up until this point, I've had you writing programs where we've been putting everything into the main, okay? That's not a normal scenario at all. It's not a good programming scenario. What we want to do is move everything out of that main and into methods, okay? And we're going to break our programs down into the integral parts, uh, the smallest of which would be input, process, and output, okay? But we may even have more breakdown than that. Um, what's this going? Um, I clicked on my screen and something popped up. I don't know what it is. The, um, again, the idea is if we look over here, I'm trying to find, that's my mail. Let's go back one here. I think it is. thought it was here. Hmm. Okay, well, it isn't here. But um, it's basically a couple things, okay? Number one, a method or a procedure, depending on what, what you call it, or a function, should do one thing and do it well. So we're going to break our programs down into things that do one thing. And right now, this might seem ridiculous. You'll say, well, Doug, why are we breaking this down? I could have just put it in the main. It ran fine in the main, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but that, again, use this as something that you're going to assimilate later on into your other programs uh, where it isn't, you don't want a bunch of code in your main, okay? Um, so that's one thing. We want to get everything out of that main and put it in places where it does one thing and it does them well. Then we want it to be reusable. So, and again, in the real world, chances are is that you're not gonna be writing um, this code by yourself. Uh, there'll be several people writing it and you might be responsible for just one of the methods or procedures or functions, okay? So you'll put your name on it, da, 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 in the real world. All that stuff we have up at the top, the documentation, you might have that in every individual procedure you write. I'm not gonna make you do that, but, but you could have in the future. Because we wanna keep track of when that part of the program was written, who wrote it, and what is its purpose, okay? So that we can pull it out or out of the virtual drawer anytime we want, and plug it into the program, okay? We talk, I talked early on once about how do you do, you know, the, the tensile strength of the steel for the McCluggage Bridge, for example. You know, once I've written that, if I write it correctly, somebody should be able to come along, take that code, and use it to calculate the steel strength on any bridge, okay? So they shouldn't have to rewrite everything over again. Again, reusability. Um, oh, what else? Uh, debugging, 
okay? We can stub what's called stubbing in. We can stub stuff in and just say, okay, this part is here, this part is here, this part is here. And then we work on the individual parts and build it in steps up to the entire program. So there's a lot of reasons for modularizing uh, our code. And again, I'm using that term generally, you know, people call them modules, they call them uh, functions, they call it procedures. Um, basically kind of the same. Um, a module, I would say a function is a ty type of module that returns a value. Functions return values, okay? Modules don't necessarily have to return anything to the calling module. And we're gonna be calling all these things from the main, okay? We're gonna say, okay, go get this, bring it back with you, or don't bring it back with you, depending on where your variables are. Um, we're gonna be passing variables back and forth from one procedure to the other. There's a cheating way to do it, or a chintzy way, whatever you wanna call it. I can take all my variables, put them up in the outside of the procedures, out in the application level, and every procedure in my program can see those variables. Is that good programming? No, it's not, okay? So for the most part, we're gonna practice passing these values back and forth between um, different modules. So you should be taking a look at this chapter uh, in the book and then uh, writing the, I forget what the other program is this week, what was it? Credit card, hey, this one, this is kind of cool. You're gonna write this program and it really works. You should be able to pull any credit card out of your pocket, type it in, and it should tell you whether or not it's valid or not. So that's kind of cool. It's actually a functioning uh, program that will do that. Because I've tried it. I've tried it with different credit cards and they all seem to work when your program's right. It's, it's a convoluted, uh, you have to follow the instructions closely. It's not that terrible. Again, if you break it down and solve it in parts, what you're gonna have to do in that one is you take like, and you add all the even numbers in the credit card number together then you add all, or, or, and then you, let's say all the evens, and then I think you mu multiply them by three or something like that. Okay, I forget, but, and then you take all the odd numbers, multiply, or add them together, and then you add the odds and the evens together, and then you divide that uh, number by 10 or something like that. But the, all the instructions are in the book, okay? Um, but like I said, if you put your credit card number in there and it does not count, if it, well, if your credit card is bad, it should tell you it's bad. Uh, if it's good, it should come up as good, okay? And again, it's not checking your accountant or anything like that. All it's saying is that that's a valid number. I mean, the, the card might not even be valid, okay? but the number is valid. So that one's kind of fun to do actually. And it's a little bit of work. It's more than what you're used to, uh, especially when you have to break it down into its parts, okay? So the minimum parts I want from you now on, from now on will be your inputs, okay? What are you getting from the user? Then the process to process it into whatever you're gonna do and then your output, you know, what is that? So that would, be the, that would be the minimum I would want you to break it into. Also, I think we're gonna implement a, a menu requirement that your program has to have a menu of some type. 
even if it's a small one that says run the program or um, run the program, exit the program, or better yet, test the program. Run the program, test the program, exit the program is a good scenario. Any questions? No. Everybody's good? Everybody's saying, oh my God, what did I get myself into? <laughs> All right, so we're recording. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Do, 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 do. Minimize this. Oh, come on. That's how far behind, if you think about it. Remember when you guys, we did pick a card some time ago? That's where the other classes are right now. The other two. Java classes are only there. We were supposed to have a special guest tonight. And uh, also, I think they're going to come next week to your class. Guess who's coming to visit? One of your dogs? No, they, they're here all the time. I could show you them anytime. No, it's a good thing. Or it can be a good thing for some of you. I'm stumped. I don't know if you teased any particular person previously. No. Caterpillar's coming, so um, they'll come and talk to you guys, I'm hoping, next Tuesday. So remind me when we get here that we that I act normal. Well, maybe I shouldn't act normal. That I act nicer than I usually am. Okay. So somebody say, hey, remember Doug Cat's supposed to be here tonight. I'm still going to wear a t-shirt, but <sighs> at least they can't see I'm not wearing shoes. I told you that story that normally I teach without shoes on. And I'm sitting in a restaurant one day and I had flip flops on. And some guy comes up to me, he goes, you're Doug Peterson, aren't you? And I said, yeah. He says, yeah, I had you a long time ago. And I knew it was you when I saw you had flip-flops on and no socks and shoes. So, it's one of my trademarks. Okay. And it's Java with Ant next. Uh, how about, what was it? Password check. Jeez, 8 September already.
Oh, what is it? I must contain only letters and digits. Hmm. I don't like those criteria. The ones in the book are kind of crappy. I'm going to change it, I think. Got the right. Okay. We're also going to get rid of whenever it tells you that you have to use certain um, certain um, names for your. different modules, uh, just ignore it. You name them what you think they should be named and you create the ones you think you need, okay? So we're gonna have, must have a minimum of eight characters is gonna be ours. Not eight, but at least eight. It must contain at least one um, numeric character let's see three must contain at least one um, alphabetic character and I'm gonna say Tam let's try this one must contain at least one special character. How's that? I think that's what most, uh, well, they have, some of them have upper and lower uh, alphabetic that you have to have a, at least one capitalized letter. We're not going to worry about that. We'll just do this like that and then clean this up down here. Get rid of all the Java doc stuff. Get rid of that. And then I'm gonna indent this a little farther so there's more delineation. So I'm gonna go two in like that, I think. I like the way that looks better than what we had. Um, I know one thing right off the bat, it says user input, so I'm gonna need a scanner. There it goes again. And then it'll put some weird one in there. I don't know why it always does that on mine. Watch, it's gonna change this to something else. Oh, it didn't, that's surprising. Let me go down here real quick, pop this in, because now we are gonna have dividers. Hopefully, if I remember how to write this program. <laughs> All right, so there's our main. And I am going to think about this for a second. If I put, if I declare a variable for my scanner when I initiate or instantiate it, and I put it in here, where can I use it? Just in main, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Can you think in this program, may I want to use it somewhere else? Yes. Yeah, maybe. So I could, I mean, I'm going to do this. And if it turns out later on 
that I don't need it anywhere besides the main, I can always move it into the main, okay? But for right now, I'm gonna put it in the main or I'm gonna put it outside of the main, okay? So I'm gonna put it up here and I'm not gonna change the name of it or the value of it at any time. So I'm gonna type in private. Private just means it can only be used in this. It can't be accessed by any other program. Okay, so it's private final scanner. Uh, let's call, I'm gonna just call it input is equal to a new scanner. Oh, it might have to be static too. We'll see here in a minute. And then system in. I think it does have to be static. Oh, maybe not. Nope. Okay, so this here, again, it's called its scope. This has a large scope. The entire class. All right. So now I can use input anywhere. Okay. Professor, I just want to let you know I have to step away real quick. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. My kid's calling me. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, okay. <laughs> you try and catch up when you get back. We'll wait okay. for you a little bit. All right. Um, to right. pause for time, if we are for a second, uh, I put in the scanner next uh, to get user input, and it is showing a big red line for me. And what does uh, it say? It is saying that it can't be it. that it can't be static. It needs to be. Yeah. static. it says non-static variable. My yep. scan cannot be referenced from a static. Do context. this, okay? So everybody change this have the word static in there. Now it's all good. See that, not amazing. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make our program run multiple times. So um, I'm gonna create a variable here. Uh, it's gonna be a char and I'm gonna call it play again. And uh, what do I wanna initialize it to? Probably I'll do that, I think. And then do. And in reality, I put Y and I could just do this maybe um, this is probably more clear. Um, I can put that slash in there, but in reality, any other character besides an uppercase Y is going to stop my program. So it wouldn't matter what you put in here. Uh, play again is equal to con or uh, input um, dot next to upper char at zero.
And then out here, the reason we got a red line there, we need a while. Play again is equal to single quotes, Y, uppercase. And I'm going to save it and see if that runs. Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry. Okay. All we did here is we, here, just catch up. We put our scanner out here, and then we wrote this, this in here. Okay. And make sure your uh, scanner has the word static after yeah, private. Yeah, private static final. Where? Up here. Static, static final. Okay. But once you get this typed like this, um, you should be able to save it and run it. Let's see if it, do you want to continue? Type the letter Y, it doesn't have to be uppercase. You can type yak if you want, it'll continue. You can type yes, it'll continue. You can type yesterday in uppercase, it'll continue. But if you do anything else like an X or an uh, X, Y, Z, it don't matter. It ends. How are we doing? I have a note next to my my scanner um, that says constant name does not follow naming. Oh, convention. you're right. You're right. Let's do this. Okay, is that because you have it listed as a final? Yes. Yep. And then I got to come down here and fix it down here too. And that's exactly where I'm at right now. <laughs> because if you remember, constants are supposed to be what? All uppercase. And again, it doesn't affect your program would have ran fine. It was just a warning saying that, you know, the convention is that if something's a constant, we capitalize it. It's not a strict rule. Okay, I'm cut up. All right. Thank you for uh, that. Oh, that's not a problem. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to have something called, uh, let's see if this will work. Char choice is equal to uh, menu about her. Something like that. I guess that should be, should that be capitalized? Eh. How about this? Get, um, Get menu choice. It's a little bit long, but I think I like it. Or even better yet, it should say set menu choice. Later on, there's a difference between sets and gets. 
So this means right here that I'm going to go somewhere else and bring back a value to fill choice. Okay. So down here, I'm going to go outside the main. And I'm going to just do this real quick. And char choice is that. So I'm going to call this char set menu choice. All right. And then this will be private static char set menu choice. Oops. And you're going to get a red, little red balloon here because it says here, if I put anything in here except void, I have to return something, okay? So before I can go back up here, I'm gonna have something I'm gonna send up there, all right? So we're gonna go here. Let's do system.out.println. Probably should have been validator, but something like that. I write it as up here. Probably should say alphabetic character. Blah, blah, blah. What else? Oh, one special character. That's good. Um, uh,
Mm. Um, we have. I got it. 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 Sure. Then return that. I can't return it as that. So I'm going to have to do this. What I wanted to do. Oh, I didn't give it. Well, that was silly. That isn't what I want here. Uh, I'm going to save this code, but it's not what I want. I'm way ahead of myself. So I'm going to blank that out. Keep that code. Don't get rid of it. You just have to retype it later. thinking too far ahead here. Okay, so Acme password, ba -da -da -da. Uh, Do I want to do that or do I want to do something else? I have a question. Yes. So you have the option to exit there. Um, mm. So what's the purpose of the char above to play again? Just we're. In, I was stubbing stuff in. We'll we'll okay. see here. Okay. Uh, so if I do that char password, I don't want that char. Uh, You should be able to get rid of that, as you said. Change this to choice. Okay, if we come here and then da 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 da. Okay, choice. 
choice can't be there. It has to be above that. Oh, you know what? I could have left that. Go back, go back, go back. And so this becomes play again, just. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to change it to choice. This goes away. And then this goes away. And this becomes choice here. Now let's see if that works. Let's do this real quick. Oops, I know it should have been an R first. Oops, I got a Let's see what kind of damage I did there. You need to put brakes in the. Oh, I sure do. Thank you. And then just a general question while we're working with case statements. I know they yeah. can check characters and they can check integers. Is there anything else they can base their choice off of? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I do a Boolean. Um, that just sounds like a more complicated if statement. Mm -hmm. I would just do stick to these and see what we got going. Oh, I forgot my slashes. Your slash ends. Yeah. So let's try R. Run is here, but it quits after that. Oh, because we break. Oh, crap. That might not work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So goes there. There, and then it comes down here. And if it is not a Y, let's do this. Oh, diamond. Sorry. I didn't really say that. Jeez. Okay, test this. I uh, need a slash N here. I need a slash N here. And I need a slash N up here. It'll look so much better. Okay. There we go. So now if I put an R, it says run is here, but it doesn't. Your testing choice to be Y. Yeah, I gotta switch this. So we gotta put a, we're gonna put play it again back in. And you know, I plan these out so well, you know that, right? Do, 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 do. And then we'll come down here and we'll say, Do that. Try this. If I do that, that goes there. That's a no there. Oh, I think I have to make that a Y up at the top though. Yep. R. There we go. And then a T. And then an X. There we go. All right. So if you can get that. I have a question. Yeah. The stuff you just deleted, don't you need that uh, so it will automatically uppercase letters for your input? No, because I'm doing it down here. Oh, yeah. Duh. Never mind. Uh, I, I think he's talking about for play again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, because they're not entering anything. Oh, okay. Well, I guess whenever we enter play again, we need it. No, but you're not going to, they're not going to enter play again. They're going to choose X to get out. And that the N is already hard coded in. Got it. Understand what I'm saying? Mm hmm So we're just for, again, I'll go over it real quick. So we're gonna put a Y here. So that means if I just leave it Y and never change this, it's gonna run forever, okay? If I 
so I'm going to initialize it to Y. So it runs the first time. They hit R, it never changes. They hit T, it never changes. It keeps running. The only time it'll stop is when play again gets reinitialized or incremented to an N, and then it's different than what we have down here. So the program stops. Okay, so now after we do that, let's go here. I have a quick question. Okay. Why do we need play again if we are changing choice in the method? Um, because the menu, I don't want it messing with the menu. Well, we, I mean, theoretically, we can just evaluate choice all through and through, right? Yeah, we are. But down here, I need so, something other than choice to trigger this. Well, if the options on the menu are only T, E, and R, it's going to change choice to something other than Y. Choice. Or am I am I mistaken? There are two different variables. Yeah, but if what I, I'm saying, it it can be more efficient if we just have one variable, right? Yeah, I'm just seeing here. Play it again would be. So we would have to set while play again is equal to R or T. Is that possible to have while or? Yeah, you could. See, we're just trying to end it here. Or excuse me, while choice is equal to R or T. Well, no, we said choice to Y before. Oh, I could have said it. not equal to N or X. Oh, let's see here. Well, no, what I'm saying, we said choice. Uh, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. So I could do this. I could say oh, Y choice yeah. or okay. while choice not equal to. Um, X, and then I don't need, let's see if this works. I don't need that, and I wouldn't need this, right? Choice is equal to. I mean, I, I don't think you even had to do that, because eventually we're not going to return, whatever we come back from the menu, it's never going to return Y, right? Or am I confusing myself? I you think you're confusing because you have to have where it goes here. It has to go to one of these three. Okay. Okay, so here's my my train of thought. Sorry for wasting. That's a no. Time here, but... If I put wild okay, choice, so scroll up. Go ahead and scroll up. Hey, wait, wait a second. Okay, so we said. The choice is Y right there, right? Yeah. And we go down to 27 and we start the loop. That loop is going to run while the choice is Y. Right yep. now is Y. Once yep. we send choice to the method, it's going to come back with three letters, either R, T, or X. Right. At that point, choice is changed. And then and we get a 53. Um, choice gets evaluated again in the loop. It's going to come back as... Um, it's going to come back as either what we said to either R T R T and E or no, R T R X. R -X. Yeah. Yes, R T R X. Right. Right. So you could have left that choice equals true, and it still would have not hit it. It would have been false, and it would have stopped the loop because at that point, choice is. But how? Wide. I'm not it's trying to stop it. I'm trying to keep it running. Yeah, he wants it to keep running when it's R or T and just not when it's X. Right. Okay. Gotcha. We want it to keep going. We don't want to just stop it. But I want to see if this works what I did here. Oops, don't type up there. I just did uh, R. Okay, that works. T works. 
And then if I hit X, it stops. So you're right in one sense, I can get rid of this. Leave just the this in here. And I can make this, R. I mean, if I wanna be really, I can make this R or T actually, instead of Y, doesn't matter. But down here, you're gonna to have to negate this because we want it to keep running as long as they don't put in an X. And if they do, that's when we want them to quit. So it's not equal to X, keeps running. If it becomes X, choice becomes X, then the program stops. Okay. Yep. Thank you, got it. That's a good question though, and it made me think a little bit. And you could do the other one. If you have yours set up to do the other one, I don't have a problem with that because it surely does work. All right, so now we got that done. It's in our menu. So let's go right here. And in here, we're gonna say, uh, let's declare it out here first. Uh, string, oops. Professor. Yes. Uh, I want to test mine, like how you just did, but I'm getting yeah. error. Would you mind scrolling down? No, to see? I will do that here in a second. Okay. I know you're in the scroll. middle of a. No, that's thing. all right. Go there. And I'm just declaring that password. Okay. So where's your error at? You got pretty red line somewhere. I do. And it's at the very last bracket of that uh, static for the menu choice. So, so I down oh, here. I, just, I don't have to return. Yep, you got to have that. Okay, that's what I didn't enter. Let me. And then my other stuff here. down here. Return. Temp. And then you need two braces down here at the. Choice. They'll look nicer once we get right here. Get and... this out of here. Yep, it's not there no more. Cool. All okay. right. Thank you. Run it and make sure you get something. Okay. Let's see. R. Works. T. Works. X. Out. I'm good. All right. Okay. So in our uh, run, Let's do this. Um, password is equal to get, I don't know, set password. So we're going to get that. And I'm gonna come down here and just cut this out of here, control X. Move my brace up there. Cause I know these need to line up. Okay. So that one goes with this. This is the one for the whole class. So here, oops, I just wrote over my brace. There we go. So right here, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this and it's a string set password. Something like that. And private static uh, string set password. All right, now all that stuff I had, I'm going to control V that in here. Do, 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 do. And then I'm 
I just need a So you should have something like that. And this doesn't, you know, you can come up with other names here. Temp or something like that. This might work better. You might understand it more. So I'm sending this temp back up to here and it's going to be come right here, comes to here, and then it's assigned to my variable called password. I think you probably want to add slash ends down here. Oh, yeah, geez. You're so picky. Slash end. Session. 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 And I also might want to add a slash end at um, or something in front of this, huh? What if I did this? Um, There we go. And then this will say enter your password here. So then that's going to be sent back up there. So let's see if in fact, oops, I can get rid of that too. Okay, and let's print out what they put in. So let's see if that works. And then we'll run it. Okay. So then if I change an R, it says password criteria, blah, blah, blah. And then I can type uh, password uh, exclamation point number one. And it takes it without an error. Okay. Prints it out. Then I can exit out and it lets me exit out. So now we got a password that's coming back up to here. So we know that as a fact. So then we're there. Okay. All right. Everybody should check theirs, make sure it comes that you have at least that much. And I need to take a short, I'll be back here in a second, okay?
everyone vandalize his screen while he's gone. <laughs> I have a squiggly in my case R under set password. Hmm. Um, what does it, hmm, what does it specifically look like? I don't think you have screen sharing permissions, but. Do you have the parentheses after the set password? In the static I do, that new public, uh, private static I do. But see, even that one has set. Method set password is not used. Hmm. But in my case R, it's there. Cannot find symbol. Variable set password location. Class password check. S E T. Oh, so that one needs a parentheses after that one. Mm hmm. There it is. Thank you. Yep. Can other people hear him? Can you hear me? No. No, sir. We can't hear you, Professor Peterson. Is your microphone by your mouth? Oh, well, silly, but. I mean, I think it's a new microphone source that got detected or it got muted. One of those two things is usually the most common issues. Um, it or unplugged. sounds like it's not plugged in right. Yeah, I was gonna say. Hang on. Can you guys hear him faintly? Yeah, yeah I think barely. maybe that'd be the laptop audio. Did you try unplugging it, plugging it back in? <laughs> oh, we hear you the tiniest bit better. Tiniest bit better, huh? Uh, that's worse. Yeah, it can just barely, barely hear in the background. Now I can't hear you at all. I don't think it's picking up in your headphones. It might be picking up in another audio source. You can check which one Zoom is picking up by clicking next to the uh, microphone thing next to your mute button. There's Hello? a little arrow. There we go. You're back. You go. Sheesh. Guess who's back? What was the issue? It's a little switch on the cord of the uh, 
uh, switch on the cord. All that means is you're never allowed to take a break again. I guess. Yeah, you leave and then everything goes to crap. Okay. So now let's go ahead and call that. So we got the set password. And so I was going to come up here to the top. And do um, Boolean uh, is valid letters or letter. Okay, and we can even set that to equals false. And so then here. We're going to say is valid letters is equal to uh, check letters. Then we'll come down here outside of this one. So this will be a Boolean check letters. Private static Boolean check letters. Okay, oops, should be private. I have a question. Yeah. Um, when you set like a any Boolean variable in general, um, does it really matter whether you initialize it to be um, false or true? No. Okay. Nope. Okay. So now I need to find um, vendor. You know where it's at. What was it? One thirty something. Um, uh, for what specifically? His letter. Uh, I will find it. String type. You remember it what is I'm talking 130, about? page 130. Okay, page 130. Yes, that's what I want. Ooh, and we could have done an uppercase and lowercase, but we won't this time. So it is letter. Okay. So I'm going to create a, oh. Tell you what we need. We need the password to get down there. So right here, we need to send our password. And if we're sending something, it's kind of like a pitcher and a catcher. If I'm sending something to check letters, I have to catch it down here. And what type is it? It's a string and uh, I'm just going to call it um, pass. I'll spell it like this. Okay. These two are not the same. Okay. This sends this down or makes a copy of it and puts it right here in this one. This is a different variable. This could have been cat or dog. It doesn't matter. Okay. Why do you want a different variable there? It's a different variable name. There. No, no I, I'm saying like, why, why do you want to make it a different variable? Like, why do you not keep it? It's different? not a different variable. Oh, I see. Okay. I see what you're saying. It's, it's, isn't it a different val variable, but the value is the same? Yes. It's a yeah. copy. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see what you mean now. And let's see. This by default, there's two types of passing. It's called there's is val and is reference. And we're passing by value right now. 
Okay. So that's that. And then I'm going to do. Loud enough for you. Hey. Enough. Stop. So there's our for loop. And if uh, t -t 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 password. Let's see here. How am I going to do this? Let's count there. So if I don't know if I want to do it that way or this. I don't even need that. Oh, it has to be a string. Jeez Louise. Wait, can you put the letter in the, as a con, the constructor to is letter? Like inside the parentheses instead of using the dot? Oh, there you go. Maybe. Is it char letter? If I can even get rid of that, hang on a second. Let me think about this. If I need a character here. Would you need a chart if you Wait, put... I need something else here because I got it wrong. I think that's might be it. Mm. 
if character is letter, okay, password dot char at count. I got one, two, three, three. There you go. Then um, so I don't need this anymore. And but I do need a variable here. Ah, oh, boolean. So blah, blah, blah. It's going to go through every time. Then is valid is equal to true. And so that goes with that. That goes with that. I'll indent these a little more. So I got that. I got that. Now I just have to return. Okay. And then up here, we're going to go, let's see what the value of Okay, blah, 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 billion is false. That goes through the count, the size. Notice it's less than the size because it. let's say it's 10 characters long. It returns, uh, that's 10. But if you put 10 in here and equal to 10, there is no 10th letter because it starts at zero. So it has to be one less than the length. So let's see if this works. Okay, so then I put in my R and then I'm gonna go ahead and type in a password and It says true, okay? So now I'm gonna do it again. And my password is what, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see it puts false there, okay? So that works. Okay, next thing. Let me leave that there for you for a minute so you can get it if you don't already have it. I forgot, I, I need to go back and check to see if there's eight, at least eight characters too. And what did you type for, um, for the case R? Which one though, up here? Just making sure I have that. Oh, okay, I don't have the system out. Well, that was that's just a check to make sure it's. Yeah, I was. I wanted to check it with you, but I was missing yeah, that. So right now, if we had a password that ended in a number, it would return false. Is that something we're going to fix still? No, it won't. Doesn't it go one by one? And so then the last yep. 
is valid. But it never, indeed. once it hits a true, it never changes it back to false because this is outside the loop. Understand what I'm saying? Uh, sorry, what's outside the loop? So the loop is in here. Mm -hmm. Once it encounters any letter, this is valid, it's gonna turn to true. It never turns back to false. Okay, so it doesn't check each letter individually and run it through does. the loop? It does, it does. But it never, down here it doesn't say, if it's this, do true, else make it false again. Oh, I see, okay. Understand what I'm saying? It's kind yeah. of a, and again, that's a logic thing that you got to get in your head. And a lot of people would think that, that if, here, here's what he's saying. My program's still running here, I can tell. So I didn't exit out the right way. Oh, come on. Oh, yes, I want to. All right. So now, if I type in an R here, and my password is this, A, whoops, A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, let's say. Oops, enter. I'm still getting true because I had a letter, the letter A. Because Even that's the only thing that you've uh, told the system to check uh, so far. Because that's the only thing you've told the, the program to check yeah. so far. But yeah. I never, like, what his problem was is he was thinking that if after you get past the A, the next one's a number, right? So does that not turn it back to false? And well, no, it doesn't. Because this is outside the loop right there. It never gets reset down here. So once it's triggered, it, it met the requirement. It doesn't have to do anything else really. And I could actually, if I didn't want it to keep going, I could do a, um, a break here and then it wouldn't even keep going and do the other letters. So if I wanted it actually to be faster, I could put a break right after this is valid or would that hit this? It may, I don't know. Just leave it like that though. Uh, I forgot to put in, let's do this one. I should have put them in order. Uh, is uh, eight. Is minimum eight char. I have a question. Yes. Um, now at the bottom, when it, when it says uh, return is valid, it's returning the value of that variable to is valid letters up top, correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. It returns it to this side, and then it's assigned to this side. So now I have this one here, is min eight characters. I need to put that up here in our little... I call it is min eight chars. Okay. Do, 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 Okay, so somewhere in here, I'm gonna move this down a little bit. Boolean, uh, check length, is that what I called it? This one will be an easy one here.
And again, this is a different password than this one because they're in different um, function or procedures or whatever you want to call them. Modules. So I got that is Boolean da 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 da. And I can just do if. Password. Uh, uh, length. I don't even have to put, oh, I guess I do. Password length is greater than or equal to eight. Oops. I need a variable here, Boolean. And then, uh, um, did you mean to make a different name for the password of the check length because it's the same as check letters? Doesn't matter. Okay, it's not, it's, it's a, a variable. Where is this variable good at? Right, in the, for check length. Just right here. What's this one good at? Right there. Just right here, so it doesn't matter. If it's confusing to you, then you can make them all different names. I don't, you know. No, I just didn't know if you meant to or not. It's all right. I think that's right, right? Blah, blah, blah. So let's go up here. All right, so I'm gonna run this now. I keep forgetting to not to hit my exit button when I'm, all right, so we run it. We type in uh, P, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops, six, seven. So that's eight characters there, hit enter. And what happened here? Oh, because I didn't. <laughs> oh, God. R. There we go. Now, P, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see that came up as true, true. And then I could go back again, I could run it again. And I can put in a one, two, three, four, five, and I get a false true. So it's not eight characters long, but it does contain a, a letter. Run it again and just do one, two, three, four, five, six, or something. And now it's false, false. Okay. So we got two of the things checked. The next one would just be Boolean is digit or do that. And then the next one down is, is valid digit or digits. What I put up there, digits or digit. I'm gonna put digits because it can have more than one. Is equal to check digits. And we're sending down password again. 
And look at how easy this one's going to be. We're going to do this one right here, take it, copy it, control C. Come right there, hit enter, control V. And this is going to be check digits right here. Static Boolean check digits. What's going on here? I think you accidentally uh, backspit or like erased your whole uh, line where you just typed beforehand. Oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? That's nice. It's because somehow I hit my insert versus, there we go. Why is that still check digits boolean? Does it need to say string password? Oh yeah, it does. Better. Change that to is digit there. Come back up here. Run it. R. True, true, true. So now it checks for that. Next one. Is Boolean is valid special? Go down, copy this, come down here, no, I didn't change that in the last one. This should be digits right here. And this one will be check special.
And this will say is valid. Da, da, da. And right here, we're going to put if character is digit. No, we're going to say if it's not equal to. And if you look, there's one called letter or digit. So we're going to say is letter or digit right there. Because if it isn't a letter or a digit, what is it? Special character. There you go. So then if we go back up here, we already called it, it should print it out. So now if I run it and I select R here and I type in P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D uh, exclamation point one, I get true, 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 true. If I run it again and I type password one, it says true, 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 false. So it looks like it's working. Okay, so that's pretty much our time. Um, so now all you have to do is fi uh, finish it, right? Yes? Yeah. Somebody say yes. Yes, yes. By you don't have to print all these out, true, 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 true. You're just going to have something that sends it down. And you'll have something here that says, uh, you could do the assessment here. If all these are true or something, you could do that or just do this. Here's what you could do, okay? So we're going to go just call um print results and we're gonna say um is min eight chars is valid letters is valid digits and is valid special. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and so what did I call it again? Print results. Um, just so we don't run out of time here, uh, what is did. the uh, test button for? We've got the run in the okay. exit. Okay, the is test, test button, what you're going to do, instead of having them put a, um, enter a password, you're gonna hard code it in there. Okay, so. Everything first, else will be the same. Got it. Except this one right here, password. All you'll do is take this and put password and just put a value in there. Or you could do it twice, making one valid, one invalid. Okay. No, yes. Well, I'm lost a little bit. In, again, you can copy all the code from here. Okay. All this code, put it right in here. Except right here, you'll put type pass, put an eight digit password in there and it's gonna print out whether or not it's valid or not without them having to do anything. That's it. And you can explain in there with a, with a you know, you can say uh, it tested this and it came out true or whatever. So this right here is a void. Print results, I think is what I had, right? And then it was uh, Boolean is valid one, 
Boolean is valid to, I don't know that I need all these Booleans. Boolean is valid three I don't know why I put all those up there. They need to be down in the next thing. I could have just done, let me cut this. X, get rid of that, put that there, do that. And now come down here and do private static void print results. I probably could just not um, we and Boolean valid four. Okay, so they get all those, and if is valid one, and it's valid two, this is a shortcut, and is valid three, just so you know, you left the two off of the is valid in the Boolean. Well, thank you. And so it assumes here that is valid one is actually, if you, again, you could put is true if you want, but it assumes that if I don't put false in there. Oh, come on. So this would be is true here. But I really don't need to be putting these trues in. But when you're learning, it's good to do it because then you understand what's going on here. So if all those are true, Enter. Well, you know what? Do you not want to do private static Boolean there? Where? Below no. your... No, no, no. No, 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 no. And this is going to be password. Did I declare that outside the... Oh, come on. Password, password, password. Why is that not? You have to pass it in the method? Shouldn't have to because it's out here. Well, if that's the case, wouldn't we not need to pass any of those Booleans either? That's true too. Whoops. Because I put them out here, huh? Oh no, it's in a separate, you're right. I have to pass it. So let's do this. I don't know what I was thinking. Thank you.
And depending on how complicated, you could even fix this. So if there was a false, one of those was a false, you could print out what's wrong with the password. Print results, print method it is not used. No, because I didn't declare it up here either. So right here, this has to say comma uh, password. And stop that for a minute. And let's see what happens. So if I do an R here and type in password exclamation point one, it says your password is valid. And then if I do an R and say, um, P-A-S-S-1 said your password is not valid, okay? So you can play with that. You can play with your output or whatever. Remember, this is all recorded. So if you didn't get it all down, you can uh, do it. You know what you can also do here, if you want to show them what's wrong with their pad, you could put change this output here to say, oh, geez, I'm on the, you could change those outputs so that they actually say, well, if it says false, then um, print out what, which one is false. You could just say in front of this print line here, you could say like, uh, is eight uh, characters. Okay, and then you could say contains a letter, contains a digit, contains a special character, and then at the end print it out. All right, what do you guys think? Somebody, yes, no, good. maybe so. Got it. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, but again, my big takeaway here is, did you see how we broke it all down? In the little it. simple steps, check to see if that step worked. If it did, then we went on to the next one. All right. Uh, is, is there any way you could go back in the program and like start from the top and like slowly scroll down? So we can go back in the video and like get an idea of how the whole program looks like in just one, like one, one whole step. You mean like this? Yeah. Just like, like slowly scroll down from the, from the top. So we can just like go at the end of the video and maybe just like see if we have the whole program. All right. Hang on. Let me get rid of this correct. big lump here. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to go all the way to the top and slowly scroll and present your screen oh crap <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that let's see how do i get back there now share screen there we go all right now i'm back up at the top you guys seeing it now right yeah yes 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 sir. all right Okay, so I'm going to slowly go down so you can see. Now, after you've ran this program once, you're going to want to come down here, outside of here, and reset your variables so that the next time you go in, they're not the same as they were the first time you went through. Okay. Thank you. So again, outside here, 
okay? The next line down here, I would reset your variables. The ones we declared up here. So they're, they look just like this, okay? But when you reset them, you don't need the date. You just reset password to nothing, choice to why, da, 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 da. All right, I gotta go, kids, ladies, gentlemen. Hey, thank you.